hello friends welcome back to the channel in this video we will be discussing some uh, questions on critical reasoning in the last video we have uh, learned the fundamental concepts of critical reasoning and now from now uh, now onwards uh, we will uh, try to apply those uh, concepts in our actual questions in on critical reasoning so i would strongly suggest those people who have not watched the uh, fundamental concepts video on critical reasoning uh, please watch that video first and then come to this video otherwise you might be having some gaps in your knowledge uh, all the questions that we are going to discuss in this particular series are questions that have been taken from uh, gmat uh, cat snap and mat etc all previous year questions and i have uh, curated those questions which are having a uh, intermediate level or a high level of difficulty so that uh, my assistance will be useful to you in uh, developing your skills uh, the simple questions i have avoided because those questions you can answer on your own anyway without too much of a problem so the strategy remains the same uh, first identify uh, read the passage carefully understand the uh, meaning of the passage without any ambiguity then uh, think about the or try to identify the facts the, uh, the conclusion or the argument then what could be the inferences what could be the assumptions try to identify those then read the question properly then go through the options and eliminate all the obviously incorrect options first then uh, uh, you can uh, streamline or you can uh, filter the uh, in, uh, well, probable answers and out of which uh, again go through the filtering process or the elimination process and identify the best answer so this should be the strategy and the strategy remains the same for all the critical reasoning questions now we will uh, discuss the questions one by one so the first question uh, I'll give you some time to read the question properly and the uh, options. Uh, if you want more time, you can pause the video and uh, complete your reading and then, then continue. Okay, so uh, in this passage, first identify the fact and then identify the argument. So what is the fact here? The fact is given in the first sentence, means uh, popular fiction writers nowadays are getting a lot of critical acclaim and are considered literary figures. What is critical acclaim? Appreciation from the critics. So who is a critic? A critic is a person who looks at uh, things from all angles, uh, looking for any kind of flaws, mistakes or inconsistencies. So basically a person who tries to judge the work as a whole based on its quality, not on the basis of its popular appeal or mass appeal. So uh, when a book is getting critically acclaimed, uh, the person who wrote the book becomes a, a literary figure. Now, uh, the fact given is that many popular fiction writers are now becoming or getting uh, this critical appreciation. Now, uh, what is the argument of the author? The argument of the author is given in the second part. I mean, so this, the first part, this part becomes your facts, fact. So till then, this is the first sentence is your fact. Then the last part is your argument means the author says that this kind of popular writers uh, becoming critically acclaimed is not justified why because these people they are uh, the since popular fiction is a genre, genre means a category whose purpose is to cater to the taste of the common people they have to focus on the craft of entertainment so his argument is that uh, the popular writers are focusing more on entertaining the people as a result of which they should not be considered literary figures they should not be uh, given critical acclaim so this is the argument so the fact is many popular writers are getting critical acclaim now the argument is that popular writers should not get a critical acclaim because they are focusing on entertainment so our question is to find an assumption so once you identify the fact and the uh, argument then your assumption becomes very clear so we have discussed about the theory regarding assumption assumption is something that is not stated but implied in the passage which connects your facts 
with your conclusion that is an assumption so your fact is that popular fiction writers are getting uh, critically acclaimed nowadays uh, uh, the uh, argument is that this is not correct so uh, why it is not correct because they are focusing on the craft of entertainment so what is the assumption made by the uh, author the assumption is obviously that when any popular writer is focusing on entertaining the people uh, he will not be uh, uh, focusing on the quality so that is the that is why he argues that they should not be getting critical acclaim so now you can uh, go through the options option a a work cannot be considered a literary work if the writer attempts to achieve the goal of popular entertainment what it essentially means means any popular work should not be getting uh, critical acclaim or any uh, work that attempts to achieve the goal of popular entertainment should not be considered a literary work means any popular uh, work uh, should not be critically acclaimed. This is what the author is uh, arguing in the passage. So this option is actually an argument. It is just the argument, a restatement of the argument. Whatever is stated in the passage as an argument, it is restated again. This is not an assumption. What is an assumption? We have to find an assumption. Assumption is something that is not stated in the passage, but something that is uh, connecting your argument with your fact or something that supports your argument is your assumption which is not stated in the passage so this option is only a restatement of whatever is already argued so this is why it cannot be an assumption now option b books that win critical acclaim cannot entertain common people what this uh, argument is saying or this statement says that any book that is critically appreciated it cannot be popular what is our argument our argument is that any book that is popular cannot be critically appreciated so this is a reverse argument so here we in the passage the author is saying that any book that is having uh, popularity or any book that is popular they are focusing on entertaining the people such books cannot be critically acclaimed whereas this option says that any book that is focusing on uh, winning the critical acclaim means any book that is focusing on the quality that cannot entertain common people do we can we say that we cannot say that so this is because the passage is not saying anything about books that are focusing on the quality the passage is only about uh, books that are focusing on entertaining the people whether the books that are focusing on the quality uh, whether they can win and uh, or they can win the uh, hearts and minds of the people or whether they can entertain people or not we don't know because we don't have any fact to support this statement we know that any uh, assumption should be supported by the facts given so this is why this is also wrong then option C, writers who strive to be popular sacrifice quality for entertainment potential. So this is the basis or this is the assumption made by the author when he argues that popular books cannot win critical acclaim because they are focusing on entertainment. So when anybody, any writer is focusing on entertaining the people, he has to sacrifice the quality. So that is why he says that uh, the basis of his argument is or when writers have to focus on the uh, craft of entertainment, they cannot win critical acclaim. So when you focus on the and entertaining the people, uh, the quality will be lost. This is the assumption made by the author in his argument. So this is not stated. Uh, is the author stating that they are sacrificing quality? No, you know, it is not stated, but it is uh, unstated. And it is the assumption made by the author when he says that uh, such books, when they focus on uh, entertainment, they cannot win critical acclaim because they will be compromising the quality. So this could be your answer. Keep it in your mind. Mind. Option D, popular books cannot win critical acclaim. Again, what is stated? This is the argument in the passage uh, restated. So this is what the passage has argued. The author is saying that popular books cannot and should not win critical acclaim. So this is only a restatement of the argument. Uh, a restatement of the argument cannot be an assumption. So this is why option D also you can eliminate. So the only correct answer is option C. So C will be the assumption uh, in this particular question i hope it is clear now we will go to the next one okay i'll give you some time to read the question as well as the options then we will discuss
okay so what is this uh, passage uh, claiming or arguing this passage is basically arguing that uh, mandated parental leave regulations should not be there or government should not be forcing companies to uh, give unpaid leave to their employees for taking care of their children because the fact is that there is a law uh, in this particular country which uh, uh, as a result of which companies have to give employees um, uh, compulsory leave unpaid of course there is no payment but compulsory leave should be given to the employees to take care of their children and uh, this is going to harm the economic competitiveness of the businesses so when uh, the staff members are uh, forced to take leave or they are they have to be the companies are forced to give staff members leave to uh, take care of their children it will uh, reduce the competitiveness of that business so this is the fact or this is the uh, argument this is the fact given and what is the uh, argument argument is that company should be given the freedom to set their own policy so the government should not be forcing companies to uh, give leave to, leave to their employees uh, the company should be uh, given the freedom to uh, decide whether uh, leave should be given or not given but, so this is the argument and what is the basis of the argument the basis of the argument is that the first sentence so this is the fact that is supporting the argument so the fact is that it reduces the economic competitiveness when you are the company is forced to give leave to their employees it reduces the economic competitiveness of the uh, companies so uh, the companies are arguing that they, the leave policies should be uh, the prerogative of the companies government should not be forcing the companies to give mandated parental leave so now your question is to find an option that weakens the argument so in this case whenever you are thinking about a statement that weakens the argument or strengthens the argument you always have to think about the fact that is or the basis of the argument so any uh, statement that weakens that fact will be weakening the argument any statement that strengthens the fact will be strengthening the argument so whenever you are asked to find a uh, statement that strengthens or weakens the argument always think about the fact given in the passage for the argument so in this passage the fact given is that economic competitiveness of the, com the companies are going to be reduced if uh, companies are forced to uh, give employees unpaid leave for taking care of their children so this is the fact on the basis of which the companies are arguing that they should be given the freedom to set their own policies now any uh, thing that is any statement that will talk about the economic competitiveness not being affected that will be the statement that weakens the argument because i told you uh, any statement that weakens the argument should be weakening the fact given in the passage to for supporting the argument so this is the, the theory you should keep in mind so once you understand that your answer will be very simple option a parental leave law will strive to strengthen the family as a social institution so this would appear to be a good statement that weakens the argument because the argument is that parental leave shall law should not be there option a says that parallel leave shall should be there because it strengthens the family as a social institution it appears to be a good argument that weakens the argument but this is not weakening the uh, basis of the argument the basis of the argument is the economic competitiveness of the businesses so here we are talking about something entirely different about the so, uh, family being strengthened as a social institution so this is not what the argument is talking about or the basis of the argument is not about social institution or not so this will not be a good answer uh, uh, our answer should be tackling the question of comp economic competitiveness so option b many businesses in this country already offer employees some form of potential leave so it says that there are a lot of businesses uh, which are already giving parental leave this you can say is a neutral argument because neutral statement because we don't know whether the economic competitiveness of these businesses are increasing or decreasing if uh, we have some data given in the passage regarding uh, the these businesses which are already giving a uh, parental leave whether they are economically uh, competent or incompetent then only we can 
uh, say whether this is a strengthening or a weakening argument. As long as we don't have that fact, there is nothing given in the passage regarding the economic competitiveness of uh, businesses that are already giving parental leave. So we cannot say whether this is a strengthening argument or a weakening argument as long as we don't have such a data. So this is a neutral argument. So we will ignore this. This cannot be a weakening argument. Option C, some of the countries with the most economically competitive businesses have strong parental leave regulation. So what is the meaning here? There are many other countries where uh, this parental leave uh, law is already there. They are also economically competitive. So this is actually uh, directly dealing with this question of economic competitiveness. Our uh, argument is that parental leave law should not be there because it affects the economic competitiveness. This uh, statement says that uh, there are countries where already parental leave laws are there where economic competitiveness is not at all affected. So this is directly uh, weakening the basis of the argument. So this could be a good statement that weakens the argument. So probable answer, keep it in your mind. Then option D, only companies with 100 or more employees would be subject to the proposed parental leave law. So it says that uh, uh, companies with less than 100 employees will not be under this law. So this uh, our statement becomes valid only when we have the fact regarding how many companies are there in this particular country with less than 100 employees and how many companies are there with more than 100 employees. If majority of the companies in this particular country are having less than 100 employees, then this parental leave law will not have any uh, significant effect of the economic competitiveness. So this could be a weakening argument. But if the companies, if the uh, most of the companies in this particular country are having employees with more more than 100 people, then this will be affecting their economic competitiveness. So this will be strengthening the argument. So as long as we don't have that particular data, we cannot say anything about whether this will be a strengthening or a weakening argument. So like in uh, option B, uh, this option is also a neutral statement as it is because we don't have the enough facts to say whether it is strengthening or weakening. Only when we have the facts regarding the number of companies with more than 100 employees and less than 100 employees in this particular country, we can say whether this is will strengthen or weaken. So this is, as it is, this is a neutral argument. So you cannot uh, consider it as a weakening argument. Then option E, in most polls, majority of citizens they uh, say they favor the passage of an international parental leave. This is a kind of a statement we consider as a uh, irrelevant argument because uh, we are not talking about the what the citizens are saying or what is the opinion of the citizens. Our uh, argument is that when you give parental leave, leave law, it will affect the competitiveness of the company. So as long as we are not addressing that issue, it becomes an irrelevant relevant op opinion so you can directly ignore it so uh, from uh, as you can see only c is the argument which weakens the uh, claim of the companies because in c directly says that there are already countries where this law is already in force and there is no uh, problem regarding the economic competitiveness so it weakens the argument of the companies option c will be your answer now coming to the third question Again, I'll give you some time to read the passage clearly and the question as well as the options. Then we will discuss. If you find that the time I'm uh, pausing is not adequate for you to complete reading, you can pause the video, uh, read the passage as well as the question and the options clearly, then continue. Only then you will get the correct idea or the clear idea regarding how to tackle the question.
all right so what is the claim in the passage the last part is the claim or the conclusion or the argument so this is the claim what is it it says that in uh, the competition of in the height area of high technology american companies have lost out to the uh, european and japanese companies so what are the facts that support this claim or what are the facts on the basis of which this claim is made the previous sentences they are all the facts on the basis of which this claim is made so it says that uh, at one time or previously in olden days uh, european and japanese companies used to uh, copy the american companies or the products of the american companies were uh, copied by the european and japanese companies but today the situation has changed completely today american companies are hiring uh, ja european scientists to uh, design their products and american cars are being uh, made that copies the german italian and french cars and the american electronic companies are uh, uh, advertising uh, the, that their products are similar to japanese uh, companies products so these are the facts on the basis of which the uh, author makes the argument that uh, in the world of uh, high technology products america has lost out uh, to the european and japanese products now your question is to find a statement that is not supporting the claim so uh, here says that uh, all the statements if true would help to support the claim above except so you have to find a statement that does not support the claim uh, regarding american companies uh, losing out to japanese or european companies in uh, the developing products uh, as a result of which uh, uh, they are copying the european and japanese products so any statement that does not imply that american companies are not copying the european or japanese products should be your answer option a an american camera company claims its brand is promotional literature to produce cameras as fine as the best swiss import so here again american camera company is trying to imitate the swiss uh, camera companies so that is why they are uh, giving the uh, advertisements they are putting out advertisements which claim that the their ca cameras are as good as the swiss cameras so this is again a clay case of american companies imitating or copying the uh, european products or japanese products to uh, get more consumers so this is uh, supporting the claim so we need an option that does not support our claim so this is why uh, this cannot be your answer you can ignore it or you can eliminate it then option b an american maker of stereo components designs his products to resemble those of a popular japanese film so again with the case of uh, a company copying or imitating a japanese company's product so again something that supports the claim not our answer option c an american manufacturer of video games uses a brand name brand name chosen because it sounds like a japanese word so uh, every all consumers think that japanese companies are very good in video games so an american uh, manufacturer also tries to leverage that uh, brand image of a japanese company by giving a brand name similar to that of a japanese word again a case of copying a japanese product or the popularity of a japanese product to get more consumer base so this is again similar to what is happening here so not a, an option that it supports the claim it's something that is uh, we need something that does not support the claim this is not our answer option d an american maker of television studies a uh, german made television is in order to adapt german manufacturing texas techniques again what is happening american product they are trying to copy the german product they by studying the german products what are the things that make them unique all these german manufacturing techniques they are trying to study so that they can be copied here so same thing so it is again supporting the claim not weakening it so you can ignore it then option e american maker of frozen foods advertises its dinners as genuine european entrees prepared by french fine french fine french and italian chefs so what is a entree entree is the main course of a meal and the main word entree means uh, main course in a meal or the main items that are served during a meal is called an entree so what is this american maker of frozen food advertising it is advertising its dinners as a genuine european entree so what is it they are making the genuine european products 
prepared by French and Italian chefs. So they are not making any American products which are copying the European or Japanese products. They are it is just an American company. What they are making genuine European anthrax prepared by French and Italian chefs. So they are not copying. They are only making the genuine products. Only thing is that it is an American company. So American company is making a European product. So uh, our claim is regarding American companies copy or imitating the European products or Japanese products. So in the claim, it is said that all the products are genuine American products, but they are trying to copy the uh, or copy the European or Japanese products or imitating them or trying to derive the mileage or the leverage of the Japanese or European products in some form or another. Whereas in option E, this is not, they are not making any American products. They are making only genuine European products pro, uh, which are made by European people themselves. So the American people are not making, the products are also not American. They are the European products. Only the company which is making it is an American company. So this is why it is not similar to the uh, facts on the basis of which the claim is made. So you can say that this is not supporting the claim. So this could be or this is the only thing that is not supporting the claim because the claim is that America has lost the battle to international prestige and the facts are given like this and this fact statement is not similar to the facts given to support the claim as a result of which option E should be the answer because it does not support the claim. All others are similar so you can ignore them. Okay, question number four. All right, see, uh, the question is asking for uh, finding an inference. Uh, we have already discussed the uh, difference between an inference and assumption in our uh, critical reasoning basics video. So uh, uh, you must be thorough with that. So inference is an, an understanding that you can get from the facts given in the passage. So whatever facts are provided to you based on which, what can be logically uh, deduced is an inference. So something that is not stated, but something that can be logically deduced because it is supported by the facts given to you becomes an inference. So you have to find an inference. So the, uh, the passage is talking about a, a rejection letter sent uh, by a government uh, institution to an applicant for a local uh, job for a local or an internship. Uh, summer jobs yes summer jobs for in a local government office so his application was rejected and so there are so many facts uh, given in the uh, rejection letter so all these are your facts and what is the inference you can make out this is your question so uh, we will uh, see the options one by one option a the number of applicants for summer jobs in the government office exceeded the number of summer jobs available yes this could be an inference see, whenever you find an inference think about the facts that support it so what is the this could be an inference how you can say it can be an inference what the rejection letter says uh, we are not able to offer a position why funding for summer jobs is limited and it is impossible for us to offer jobs to all those who want them so since it is not possible for them to give jobs to all the people who have applied they are rejecting some of the candidates so what is the obvious inference there are more applicants for the jobs than the number of jobs available so this is a good inference only when there are the applicants are more than the number of jobs available they will be rejecting some applicants so option a is a very clear inference it is a possible answer keep it in our mind Option B, the applicant who received the letter was considered highly qualified. It may seem like a good inference. Why? 
the uh, letter says that we are forced to reject many highly qualified applicants so many highly qualified applicants also were rejected by the government office but whether this particular applicant was highly qualified or not we do we know we don't know it is not directly given that you were highly qualified but because there were many more applicants we were forced to reject your application the passage or the letter only says that many highly qualified applicants also were rejected by the uh, we were forced to reject many highly qualified applicants also whether this particular applicant was highly qualified or not we cannot deduce from whatever facts are given so this is why it cannot be a good inference even though it appears to be a good inference it is not supported by the fact so this will not be a good inference option c very little funding was available for summer jobs in the government office what is stated here funding for summer jobs is limited means the our funding is not very high uh, or you have to read the sentence completely funding for summer jobs is limited and it is impossible for us to offer jobs to all those who want them so what is the meaning the meaning is that the funding is not as uh, much as for uh, enabling us to offer jobs to all the people so uh, indirectly it means that uh, we would have liked to offer jobs to everybody but the that much funding is not available for us so uh, but the option says that very little funding was available for our summer jobs this need not be correct the funding is adequate for a particular number of candidates the passage only or the letter only says that the funding is not adequate for offering jobs to all the people who have applied but that does not mean that very little funding was available for summer jobs it say, may say that uh, adequate funding was available for hiring people who are actually required but not enough funding to hire people all the people who have applied so that is a difference between hiring all the people and hiring enough number of people or adequate number of people so this is why this also will not be a good inference because it is again not supported by the facts in the letter so that is why this also we can ignore then option D, the application of the person who received the letter was considered carefully before being rejected. So whether his application was carefully considered or not, do we know? We don't know. Anything is there in the letter, so just go through the letter again. Anything is there in the letter uh, which says that his application was carefully considered it only says that there were a lot of uh, uh, large number of applicants and we were forced to reject many highly qualified candidates also you your the application is also rejected whether uh, your application is considered carefully or not carefully this is not stated in the passage or it is not implied here as a result of which this also will not be a good inference then option e most of those who applied for summer jobs are considered qualified for the available positions again there is no indication in the letter that say where you can deduce that all the people who applied were qualified there might have been many people who are not qualified for the post it only says that the letter only says that there were many highly qualified applicants also their applications also were rejected but that does not mean that all the people who applied for the jobs were qualified people so again something that is not a good uh, inference so you can ignore it so the only inference that you can draw from the facts given is option a this is a classic example of a question where inferences should be supported by the facts given Wh what happens is that when you casually read a question and casually go through the options it will appear that all the options will appear to be good inferences but you need to uh, uh, do it in a critical point of view that is why it is called critical reasoning you look at all the angles and uh, go through the uh, uh, sentences very very minutely and see whether the inferences are supported by the facts if they are supported they are good inferences if they are not supported they are bad inferences you can ignore them so option a is the only good inference that you can deduce from this particular passage now go to the next one
all right so here uh, what is the fact what is the conclusion the fact is that in cases of fatal automobile what is a fatal automobile accident a fatal accident is uh, any accident in which at least one person uh, dies is called a fatal automobile accident so in uh, studies regarding fatal automobile accidents in majority of the cases in which one occupant is a killed and another survives so in all okay, or when they studied about the cases of automobile accidents in which one person dies and another person survives it is always the uh, or it is, in most of the cases it is the passenger who is killed not the driver so this is the fact so this first part is your fact so this till this this is your fact and what is the conclusion or the argument this is the conclusion or the argument the conclusion is that it is ironic that the innocent passenger should suffer for the driver's earnestness and carelessness while the driver suffers only minor injuries so the conclusion or the argument is that it is uh, uh, not correct that uh, the innocent passenger should pay for uh, the driver's fault with his life so the driver is uh, careless and because of which the passenger who is innocent he has to uh, pay for the uh, carelessness with his life so this is not correct so the passage is arguing that uh, the passenger uh, the getting killed in the accident while driver survives is not a good thing or a correct thing uh, this is the argument so the argument is based on this particular fact now what is the assumption underlying in the reasoning that is what you have to find what is the assumption that the author is making when he makes this argument so what is the assumption see the assumption is always uh, connected to the argument or the conclusion we have already discussed that in our previous uh, video so the, the assumption here is that the what is the argument argument is that it is ironic that the innocent passenger should suffer for the driver's carelessness so the assumption is that the driver is uh, always at fault in all the cases of automobile accidents where the passenger is dying so the uh, dying this is the assumption that is why the uh, author argues that this is not correct because the driver was careless but the passenger who was innocent he was uh, uh, getting killed so this is why the assumption is that the driver is always at fault in those cases when the passenger is driving so this is the assumption that you can clearly get from the facts here so once you know that your answer will be very very clear option a in most for a fatal automobile accident the driver of a car in which an occupant is killed is at fault yes in most fatal automobile accidents yes in most of the fatal accidents the driver of a, of a car in, uh, in which an occupant is killed is at fault so it is um, the driver's fault so the assumption is that it is the driver's fault that is causing the accident so this is what the passage is also assuming so this could could be your answer keep it in your mind option b drivers of automobiles are rarely killed in auto accidents so drivers of accident accidents automobiles rarely getting killed is not a good statement what should be the proper statement here the proper statement should be drivers of uh, automobile in cases of automobile accidents where one person is killed and another person survives in such cases drivers or automobile accidents are rarely killed so that should be the correct statement and even if uh, we ignore the first part if we take this uh, part this is this an assumption this is not an assumption because this part this is something that you can infer from the first part or the facts given to us so the option b is actually an inference it is not an assumption because this uh, drivers of automobiles are directly killed in auto accidents is that is an understanding that you get get from the facts given to us it is not connected to the argument or the conclusion so this is actually an inference it is not an assumption so this is why it is not your answer then option c most deaths in auto fatal automobile accidents are suffered by occupants of car rather than by pedestrians it is talking about another aspect which is not discussed in the passage about the pedestrians we don't know anything about the fatality rate of pedestrians in automobile accidents how many pedestrians are dying or not dying we are not bothered so and that is not the focus of our discussion so since it is not the focus of our discussion or the focus of our conclusion we can clearly ignore it because this is not an assumption that will lead to our conclusion option d auto safety experts should increase efforts to provide protection for those in the passenger seats it is talking about something that the auto safety experts should be doing this this is actually a, uh, something that should come out of this study but this is not a assumption that is leading to the conclusion our conclusion is that uh, pass, uh, innocent passenger 
passenger dying while uh, for driver's carelessness is ironic that is our conclusion so this option is not going to help in our conclusion or this option is not an assumption uh, it is just a, a, a byproduct of or, a, or a something that you can do after the study so this is not an assumption any assumption should lead to our conclusion so as a result of it this is not leading to our conclusion so you can ignore this this is not needed so not our answer then automobile passengers sometimes will be contributing role in causing auto accident so this option is saying that it is as much the uh, passengers fault as uh, uh, as the drivers fault is this a good assumption it is not a good assumption because an assumption should lead to the conclusion whereas in our conclusion we, we say that the innocent passenger the uh, key idea is innocent passenger so when you have the uh, when you are concluding that the passenger is innocent can you make an assumption that the passengers are uh, make a, having a role in causing auto accident no this is contradictory so that is why this also will not be a uh, good assumption so all these are wrong these are not at all good assumptions the only correct assumption is option a that leads to our conclusion because we are assuming that the driver is uh, the uh, reason for the accident the, the driver's carelessness or driver's fault is the reason for the uh, accident that is why you say that why innocent passenger should suffer for the carelessness of the driver so we are assuming that it is the driver who is always at fault in cases of these kind of fatal accidents so option a is the assumption it is your answer so these are uh, some of the questions which i have uh, discussed for uh, making the concepts of inferences assumptions conclusions etc thorough in your mind we will be uh, dealing with these kind of questions in your in our future videos as well so i would again suggest the candidates to first go through the uh, basics video in order to understand the distinction between the facts inferences assumptions and conclusions that will help you in uh, making the uh, or getting the clear and correct answers very in a very swift and fast manner in all the, uh, all the critical reasoning questions. So thank you. Please like and share the video if you have liked the content. Thank you. Bye-bye.